hey guys welcome back to my channel this is your girl natasha and you're watching tasha yoks so i decided to do um a short series on international students okay from the beginning of how you are going to become an international student what it's like being an international student and what happens after you're an international student sort of so we're going to start with how to search for scholarships or how to secure scholarships abroad okay so if you guys don't know i am in canada in the university of toronto doing my masters i'm doing masters in information and i'm in my final year so um i know a little bit about searching for scholarships and all that but um i didn't have to I didn't have to search too much because my situation is kind of a bit different so i am so i asked a few of my friends who really spent time searching for scholarships uh, and they got them one of them is in the uk and one of them is in uh, us so um i would be giving you guys my tips and, and then they would also be giving you guys um their tips on how to secure a scholarship so just mind you that some of the points may be repeated for um all of us but i think that would show you the authenticity of those tips because maybe you worked for all three of us okay so yeah let's get right into the video So it's a season of searching for scholarships and schools and admissions those who want to do their undergrad in abroad those who want to do their um, graduate studies abroad so this is what this video is all about all right so let's start with the tips one thing i would say is important is your relationship with your professors when you were in your undergraduate okay or um, when you were in um, senior high school because you're going to need them to write a recommendation letter for you when you are applying to schools outside the country when you are applying for schools in general to um, further your education you need them to write recommendation letters for you reference letters and when they know you they know you academically they know you as a person they can help sell you better to the school you are applying to okay the recommendation letter would sound personal because they have a personal relationship with you they know you okay but there are certain situations where um you could ask a professor or a lecturer to write write a recommendation letter for you and he doesn't know you when you were in school you were sitting at the back you don't talk to anyone you don't you don't answer questions in class so they don't know you and then they just give you a general recommendation and let me tell you that schools know i that's what i think i think schools know when they are reading recommendation letters and they know that um they can feel that oh this is this sounds personal it, it sounds like the lecturer actually knows the students or this one sounds like it's just like a it, it's it's just a template reference or recommendation letter that your name was just put in so i would i would say that the, your first step is to be able to have a, um, a relationship with at least two of your professors in your previous uh, level of education so the next step is to know what program or what country you want to study in. know what you want to study if you want to be doing um mba know that oh yes decide okay i want to do mba because you have a background in business administration do you get it or if you want to do any science course know that you want to do science course then your search would be narrowed and then it would be easier for you to search for which schools offer the programs you want to you want to pursue and knowing the country you want to study in okay narrow down your search okay and it makes it easier because searching for school is actually very very cumbersome so once you know your program once you know your country then you search for the schools right when you find a school search for the school's requirements on 
the program you want to pursue because the requirements um, vary from faculties to faculty okay it's an entire university but requirements for courses or programs vary from faculty to faculty the requirements the requirements for law students will be different from requirements for science students it would also be different for business students so you check for the requirements of uh, the faculty that you want to be admitted into okay you check if they require you to write professional exams like TOEFL, GMAT, GRE so that you know how to get ready before you apply for um, admission for these schools or these faculties okay so know their requirements to know if you're eligible to apply for the course even uh -huh. and then you get ready with all the necessary documents to um, go ahead with the application process. So the next thing for you to do is to check if there are any scholarships available in the school Whether it be, be it in the school in the faculty you are applying for or um, The government of that country some of them have um, Some of them have scholarships available for international students and that is something you would hear from one of the one of my friends who would um, come later. So yeah, just check to know all the available scholarships because there are different scholarships right there are scholarships that are full scholarship they take out they take care of your tuition your accommodation your books your your feeding and everything that's the kind of scholarship i am on i'm on a hundred percent scholarship i do not pay anything so there are scholarships like that and then there are scholarships where they only pay your tuition and then you would have to cater for yourself accommodation wise and uh, every other thing right so check and then make sure that uh, this is the kind of scholarship you want if you are okay taking care of yourself then you go for um, a partial scholarship if it's available so check another tip for you guys is if you are really looking for scholarships and you have not subscribed to so scholarship positions you should you are looking for scholarships how are you not subscribed to this website do you get it so scholarship positions is a website where you uh, you can subscribe to their newsletter and then three times in a week they send you a list of available scholarships in every part of the world so i'm going to go ahead and introduce one of uh the people doing this with me mind you these people are not youtubers okay so if they're not looking in the camera if they're looking away uh pardon them but just listen to the tips that they're giving you and take something away from it the next person coming to talk is called elizabeth osei and this lady had a um, her master's degree in the uk for a year she's now pursuing a phd and she was also in a full scholarship so please listen to the tips she's going to give you and after her would be um michael decker who is also in who is in the US so you are getting tips from someone who in Canada which is me uh, Elizabeth in the UK and Michael in the US so this is the kind of variety I brought for you today yes so let's welcome uh, Lizzie and listen to what she has to say sub ty gang I get to come on Tasha's YouTube thank you Tasha for this opportunity so i'm here to share my experiences with regards to how i went about my master's study in the uk and um okay so before i get started yes i'm going to speak about only the uk because that's what i've experienced um hey did i mention my name okay so i'm called elizabeth paddy so um i hold a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from KNUST and a master's degree in international water and sanitation engineering from Loughborough University in the UK. I chose to study in the UK because um, I wanted a one-year master's program, first of all. Um, I mean, I don't like studying, so why two years when you can get the degree in one year? So I decided to go for the UK. So, um, before I started my master's application, I, 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 you first of all have to decide on the country you want to study in. So, I decided I was going to go to the UK. So, after you know the country you want to go to, um, you start searching for schools that um, offer the program you want to offer. So, you make a list of schools that are good. You can make use of the internet. QS rankings, I think that they rank the schools based on programs as well. 
So um, you make a list of all the schools, potential schools you want to attend, who offer your program, if possible, who are the best or who are good or have like all the resources and the centers for the program that you want to offer there you have to check the application requirements of all the schools so um different schools have different requirements you have to pay um application fees for some uk schools uh, some uk schools may take ilts ilts or tofel and um, so you check all those requirements so another thing um i did was that i personally decided that i wasn't going to pay any application fee i was not going to write any test pay for any test but it's your decision so if you are deciding that you are going to write tests and you you prepare for that right before you check out your schools so um and then you make your application fee ready as well so first of all decide on the country check on the schools that offer your program check the application requirements check the requirements thoroughly and if you have any questions you just email the school and then ask the questions they'll get back to you so these are the first three things i did and then now so in the uk um it's quite difficult to get um like a scholarship that is sponsoring um your both your tuition fee and your living expenses of course there are some like the commonwealth chevening and all that that i didn't apply for those mastercard scholarship to have some um, a school in the uk i didn't apply for those so i can't talk about them but what i did was that amongst the schools i had listed i decided to look for schools that have um that have tuition scholarships so full tuition scholarships so they pay your fees and then you find a means to cater for yourself you can work or maybe i mean you can support yourself your family can your family can support you but they can't pay like the fees and everything so if you have the fees catered of um catered for that school or you have a relative in the uk or in, in the hood like where your school is located that you know the person can support and all that i checked whether those schools i had applied for have 100 percent tuition scholarships so most of the uk schools do and most of the schools have like a scholarship parts um on their websites where you can check out the scholarships or you can just email the schools and ask them you know and um, you want to find out if they have um 100% tuition scholarships and all that. So that's what I did. So my school had Loughborough University has 100% tuition scholarships for um, African students. So they have that. And then the program that I did too, they have tuition scholarships for that, 100% tuition scholarships. So I applied for both. So the African scholarship is quite competitive because it's like the whole, every African student regardless of the program and then mine was just my program so i got onto the one with my program and then it would be left with my living expenses so there are two ways to go about the uk scholarship either you search for 100 percent tuition scholarship and then you find a way to cater for your living expenses or you just apply to the school when you get the admission then you apply for the government scholarship so we have the get fund Ghana gets fund foreign scholarship. They sponsor people to go abroad for master study, or um, GNPC Ghana National Petroleum Corporation scholarships. So for those, sometimes the calls come um, very late, or when they come, like they open they open the applications for like a week and then they close. So you have to like keep following up calling going there and all that so these government scholarships uh, especially for the gmpc your chances of getting are higher if you already have like a hundred percent tuition scholarship so um i applied for the gmpc scholarship and um because my tuition fees were being catered for i was able to get my living expenses so they paid for my maintenance my tickets like a visa and everything so at the end i didn't have to pay anything there was nothing involved so um that's about it um yeah thank you very much ty gang and uh, if you have any questions you can contact me on osei.n.elizabeth at gmail.com and um, I'll be ready to answer all your questions. Oh, one more thing. Um, I know some people too on social media that um, share scholarships all the time. So there's this lady called Lois Ifwa Ochiwa Damte on Facebook and LinkedIn. And she's been sharing a lot of scholarship opportunities. So I just gave like some 
tidbits about uk education and um, she has like all over the world canada usa all over the world she's always sharing scholarship opportunities giving tips she has this thing called scholarship news in brief so every saturday 6 p.m she and a couple of friends like they come um, they do facebook and instagram lives where they share scholarship opportunities and all that you can comment ask questions and all that so she's the best person and um, there's another guy on linkedin i'll i'll give the so tasha will display the details and then um yeah so thank you very much and i hope to come on tasha's youtube again not for scholarship but something else so have a nice day and um bye bye so you guys heard what lizzie had to say yep i would put all the information she gave in her video in the description box so make sure to check that out our next person is michael dicker from the u.s today i'm here to talk about applying for scholarship in the u.s i'm pretty sure everyone is interested in applying for scholarship but all i have to say is it's quite a simple process at the same time a tedious one in order to secure a scholarship for the, in the us or canada which i'm very familiar with first of all you have to get very good academic grades so with respect to my school um, we normally deal with classes so with the top notch um, academic grade we have the first class and then the least requirements for any school in the US is second class of power, which is normally um, a 3.0 GPA. And then the best you could ever have is 4.0. But that is not enough. You normally have to go beyond um, a very good GPA to also having a very good credential. It has a very good work experience or let's say uh, internship experience with regards to the field of study in which you are willing to take in the US. Now, this is quite different with undergraduates, but with graduate study, you have to prove that you have you are very knowledgeable in the field in which you intend to study. Now, navigating your search in the US, it's very difficult because there are over 2,000 schools in the US, um, that's universities in the US that normally offer a variety of programs. So trust me, you find any program you want in the US or Canada. Now, looking for the schools is one difficult thing, and I can assure you, it's it's it can take you a lot of days to look for a very good school. Um, there is this one website I find very useful, which is Education um, US News, sorry, usnews.com. It has like a list of schools in the US and in Canada and certain part of Europe that you could easily narrow down your search by course. So if you are looking for fine arts. You could just type in fine arts and then it will give you a bunch of schools that offer fine arts and through having this list of schools you go to the school website check the department if they have scholarship which is normally known as funding here now the scholarship should usually entail full tuition with a plus typing you don't want to apply to any school that is probably going to give you no tuition because it's very difficult to survive here without tuition waiver and stipend. Now, these are one of the basic requirements in which you need to note. Aside all of that, every school have their own requirements, so you probably have to do a very rigorous research with regards to that. Some schools may require you write GRE, which I think about 90% of the schools in the US will require you write GRE. Some schools will not. Um, Others will require you write GMAT depending on the course in which you want to study. I think GMAT usually associated with um, business inclined courses. And some will not allow, will not require you write GRE, especially if you are in the arts field. With sciences, normally, or mathematics, statistics, you normally go with a GRE, which is a very common one. After, um, let's say, doing, writing the GRE, getting a very good score, you also need recommendation and also have to write the statement of purpose, which is also known as the SOP. The SOP is just talking about yourself and um, your goals in which you intend to um, achieve after your graduate school or during your graduate school. So it's basically talking about yourself. It's more like marketing yourself to the school. So how well can you market yourself to the school? Um, also, you need recommendations from 
your professors or let's say any place you work from usually i recommend professors because you are going to academic field so they are the best people who can write about you knowing you have a very good academic academic background sometimes a recommendation from um a place in which you do your internship can also help but normally i will still prefer professors over that anyway that's just my personal view um i think these are the most basic requirements to secure a scholarship in the u.s and um, there are a lot of details and like nitty gritties that comes into this it's not just as easy as i'm saying it but um, you need a, a few tricks to note and this trick will be said in a later video which um is gonna we're gonna upload later on so just stay tuned to tasha yorks and we'll keep you updated thank you yes so guys let's say let's say thank you to these two people who took out their time to record themselves giving you tips this is not something they are used to okay yes so um thank you guys so much lizzie and michael i really appreciate it and i think my subscribers are going to really appreciate the tips you just gave us thank you so much i'll put every information in my description box so be sure to check that out and as michael said you would see a lot more tips in our next video so my next video is, is going to take you guys through how to really search okay i'm actually going to take you through the practical process of searching for um scholarships searching for programs and everything i would um be on my laptop and i'll record my screen and show you guys how it all goes that's what i'll be doing in the next video so i hope you guys will stay tuned for that and yes if you think this video was helpful please give us a thumbs up because it was in partnership with some people you know yes so please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already to see the next list of things on my list for the international student um, series and i will see you guys in my next video don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys later bye